the documentary that explores how the three type of airborne vertebrates, pterosaurs, birds and bats, evolved to become champions of the sky and how efficiency does not mean survival. Perhaps the most amazing fact about the evolution of flight is the convergent evolution that occurred between the three groups that evolved through flight. Within this convergence, we can see general rules that govern how flight evolved within the animal. Perhaps the most perplexing aspect of the evolution of flight is how and indeed why flight evolved. Before we can begin to understand why flight evolved, we must first ask how wings evolved. It is believed that wings evolved from arms to assist in leaping and catching prey. It is also believed that wings evolved from gliding ancestors who flapped their limbs in order to develop thrust. It is very difficult to observe the changes in behaviour and morphology in relation to the evolution of flight today, since flight evolved millions of years ago. However, with the use of the fossil record, it allows us insight into the development and the behaviour of these three groups. After insects, the first creatures to take to the air were pterosaurs. Flying reptiles, their origins are shrouded in mystery, as are their exact behavioural patterns. But evidence of these creatures' lifestyle is finally coming to light through the fossil record. This brings us to our first stop in our journey through the evolution of flight, in the Italian Alps, where the Preondactylus buffarani, the oldest known pterosaur fossil, was dated and found to be 220 million years old, firmly placing pterosaurs in the Triassic period. Fantastically varied from filter feeders and shoreline shell eaters to experts in fishing, they spread across the globe, but the true scale of their variety will never be known, since like all flying animals, they have hollow bones. Fossil evidence shows they inhabited a wide area of the Earth, including what is now North America, Africa, and Eastern Asia. Varying in size from a modern robin up to a Quetzalcoatlus with the wingspan of a light aircraft, the early forms had long tails, but as the brain developed, so did the ability to control their bodies in flight, and they grew larger and larger. Early forms of pterosaurs had a tail with a leaf-shaped structure on the end which it used to change direction, similar to a rudder on a boat. The highly developed part of the brain controlling the wings allowed the pterosaur to grow very large, the size of a small modern aircraft. The largest was 11 or 12 metres in wingspan, slightly bigger than an F-16 jet. The arm bones here and here supported a strong hand bone from which three fingers protruded slightly whilst the force elongated to support the wing. Strong shoulder muscles here and down the arm here helped support the fingers in the centre of the wing, allowing it to spring off the ground to take off. Research shows the pterosaur had four layers to its skin. The underlying layer contained a series of thin struts which gave structure and rigidity. A layer of skin, a layer of muscle and blood vessels, and an upper layer of skin which must have been capable of reflecting ultraviolet light. This brings us to North China, to the most diverse group of vertebrate flyers to ever evolve, the birds from the Aves class, an estimated 9,000 species worldwide. They have a wide range in diversity, not only species, but also in flight adaptions. Some of their remarkable adaptions for flight include a one-way breathing system, feathers, powerful flight muscles, and lightweight hollow yet strong bones. These hollow bones are not wasted space, as in some bones they contain extensions of the air sacs from the lungs. These air sacs help to supply much needed oxygen to the bird for quick and easy flight. Internal structures in these bones help to give them support and brace the bones so it can withstand longitudinal pressure. The following record for birds is not extensive, as the light hollow bones are not likely to survive through time. One of the oldest known fossils found, which is thought to be of bird origin, is Aurora Zoe, which was found in North China and governed the skies during the mid to late Jurassic 160 million years ago. Archaeopteryx is a prominent fossil from the evolution of flight timeline. For a long time, it held the title for being the oldest known bird fossil at 150 million years old. But although it knocked off that part for being the oldest, it still holds an important position in the early evolution of birds. Discovered in Bravia in Germany in 1861, it was Archaeopteryx that proved that modern birds had evolved from pterosaurs. Archaeopteryx is most likely an evolutionary biplant of birds be. Like modern birds, it possessed wings and feathers, but like pterosaurs, it had strong bones and teeth. We end our journey through the evolution of flight in North America. 
where the earliest known bat species, the Icaronicarus, was discovered. The Icaronicarus is approximately 52.2 million years old, placing it in the early Eocene era. It is classified as being the earliest known definitive bat, and has remarkably well-preserved bat fossil specimens located in North America in the Green River Formation. This tells us that the modern bat form was already clearly established in this era. However, unlike modern bats, the Icaronicarus bats did possess a few structural differences to today's modern bats. Bats were an incredibly diverse group of mammals, and the only mammals that have ever evolved through power of flight. There is little known about the earliest evolution of bats, as the fossil records were highly scarce. Recent phylogenetic data, however, has shown that the earliest bats were nocturnal, arboreal insectivores and lived in dark areas such as this. It has also been hypothesized that bats have evolved from gliders and that the earliest known bats used this gliding membrane as a sort of net as the flight stroke evolved. The bat wing is composed of a membrane which is supported by the arm and the greatly elongated fingers of the hand, all of which support the distal part of the wing where trust is produced. Bats have developed flight adaptions such as clawed fingers and a membrane which stretches between the hind limbs and assists in stabilising the bat during flight and often to capture prey. To this day there is still no definite answer in the ongoing debate as to whether flight evolved from trees down, from a semi-bipedal arboreal leaping and gliding ancestor, or from the ground up from a bipedal ground dwelling ancestor. It is a debate that will continue no doubt for many years to come as neither hypothesis is testable. The subject as to why wings evolved is also another ongoing dispute yet to be resolved among scientists, as various hypotheses conceived also cannot be tested directly. Various hypotheses include wings evolved to help catch flying or fast moving prey, wings were used as sexual display structures, wings evolved to free the hind legs for use as weapons and to help escape from predators, wings helped in gaining access to new food sources or unoccupied niches. Wings evolved because bipedal animals were leaping into the air and the large wings assisted with the leaping. And also wings developed from gliding ancestors who began to flap their gliding structures in order to produce thrust. In this documentary among the pterosaurs, birds and bats, we can observe indications of common constraints imposed by the phylogeny and the biomechanics of organisms as a result of their striking similarities. We can perceive how evolution has taken various different routes to comply with these constraints. This results in diverse functional patterns. The evolution of flight can also be described as a classic example of macroevolution. What this means is the fossil record shows us that once hard flight has been achieved, lion lineages tend to evolve rapidly and radiate to various assorted niches. A featherless flying reptile in the time of dinosaurs With wings span as wide as a bus Its name is Quetzalcoatlus 